saying of the day, patriotism is supporting your country always and your government when they deserve it. Mark Twain said that, and I think that's that's good, that uh, your country always deserves it, your government doesn't always deserve it. And uh, they'll be lucky if they hit a 50-50. Today, uh, Memorial Day, and it uh, originally started out as Decoration Day, uh, honoring the fallen soldiers, the people that have actually died. And... uh, then it was moved. It was on May 30th, and then 71, Congress moved it to the last Monday. And that way you have a three-day holiday. And, and uh, But this today, we need to think about uh, the ones that gave their life. I, I tell you, the most sobering thing that you can ever look at is to go to one of our national cemeteries, uh, Arlington, or go to Punch Bowl in Hawaii, or uh, the... Uh, cemetery at Luxembourg in Europe and just see those white crosses just forever. And there's a lot of young men in there that would have died, you know, other, other causes and would have had successful careers. And now there's some young women that lost their lives in the wars since we've had a change in the military. By the way, uh, President Biden did announce my friend C.Q. Brown, he's a four-star general, Texas Tech guy, and uh, originally from San Antonio, uh, his dad was in the military, was a colonel, and uh, he went to Texas Tech and was a good person. He's a distinguished alum. 2012, when I was chancellor, he got the Distinguished Alum Award and had a lot of people show up, and he was there last fall and made some speeches, talked to the basketball team. When he talked to the basketball team, you could hear a pin drop. You know, I told him, this is the number one guy in the Air Force. And uh, there's a chance someday to be uh, the uh, uh, number one guy in the military. So he's chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. And, uh, you know, the president makes the decisions, and the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff makes sure they're carried out. So I, I think he'll have a good career as, as chairman. He was appointed as uh, chief of staff for the Air Force by Trump. He's one of only three people that have been appointed to something by Trump and Biden. <laughs> so I, I, that's pretty hard to get those two to uh, to appoint you. But I, I, a shout out to him and CQ, and that's what everybody calls him, uh, except you're in the military, you call him general, and and uh, that's that's what they call him in. He's a classy guy, classy guy, and we're proud of him. Today, uh, I was going to talk a little about Tina Turner. Uh, she passed away last Wednesday. Uh, she was born in Brownsville, Tennessee, and her parents worked for sharecroppers. They weren't sharecroppers. They worked for sharecroppers. And you're talking about a troubled youth. She had, She lived in five different homes. Her mother left at one time. Her dad remarried. And she lived with her stepmom. Dad lived with her grandparents, and uh, had just a you know tough time growing up. She could sing. One of the things she loved to do was go to church and sing, and that uh, she was excellent at that. And people started listening to her, and then uh, she met Ike Turner who she later married in uh, St. Louis. And uh, she sang there and sang in some clubs, R&B clubs, and honky-tonks, any any place to make a little money. And a lot of people don't realize this, but she had an album on country music and sang songs that Hank Snow and Waylon Jennings and Dolly Parton uh, sang. Oh. Waylon Jennings was one of her heroes. She loved the th- the songs that he wrote, and uh, she thought Waylon Jennings was really a, a class guy. And uh, she sang on that country album, Help Me Make It Through the Night. And then Ike, she was still married to Ike Turner at the time, and he had her sing, Stand By Your Man, and You Ain't Woman Enough to Take My Man. And uh, it's all about Ike. And uh, he he uh, abused her. He hit her. 
Uh, later in defense, he said he didn't hit her with his fist. He just slapped her as if that were okay. And, uh, you know, uh, Ike had a hard, just a tragic life also. He died broke with a overdose on cocaine. And uh, so it's a hard living. Uh, Tina Turner was, uh, she performed in the largest paying crowd in the history of the world. 186,000 people in Rio paid. And they didn't even speak the same language, but they, they loved her music. And you know, she had different presidents brag on her. And, and uh, President Bush said she got the best le- looking legs in the world. And she had them insured. You know, she had uh, four sons. Uh, two of them were Ike's. And, uh, and she had uh, uh, two of them died, one of them by suicide. So she had a lot of obstacles. And CBS Sunday Morning News did a story on her a few years ago that was really good. But she married a guy, Erwin Bach, uh, from Germany. He was a music producer, and he was, she said she was a cougar. He was 17 years younger. But they really had a good life together, and in her last 20, 30 years were the most stable uh, times that she had ever had since she was a little girl. And uh, really enjoyed and had a, had a good marriage with him. Became a, a citizen of Switzerland and, uh, and not of the United States. And part of that was taxes. You know, she wasn't fond of paying taxes both places, so she decided to be in Switzerland. Most everyone that dealt with her always had good things to say about her. And uh, and I think part of that was the, the abuse she went through. She left Ike Turner in Dallas. They were at the uh, Statler Hilton downtown, and uh, he beat her up, whipped her, slapped her, did whatever. And uh, she, uh, wait till he passed out, and then, she got her clothes and got up and left, and she had 37 cents and a mobile credit card. And, uh, you know, it was bad, but she she had her limit, and that was it. And she never went back with him. He begged her and pleaded. And study came came out uh, last week, and I kept some of the figures so I could give them. Young adults are putting off decisions. They don't make them as quick as they did. First full-time job at age 21, in 1980, 64%, 64% of the people that were 21 had a full-time job. Now it's 39%. So it's dropped 25% from getting a full-time job. And part of that be, may be more people going to college. you know, uh, Financial independence, and that's not living off mom and dad, you know, not having to be subsidized by your parents. Uh, It was 42% were financially independent by the time they were 21 in 1980, and now it's 25%. So it's dropped. First apartment was 62% in 1980, and now it's 51%. More people living at home. Uh, Marriage, this is a big one. 32% of the people in 1980 were 21 were married, and now it's only 6%. Big change, big change. And then first child, 18% of the people uh, had a child at the age of 21, and that's 6%. So it's dropped significantly, and a lot of changes, a lot of reasons. Uh, you know, a lot of people not getting married, they're, they're living together. And, and you know, it, it, so there's been a big change. It's remarkable to see that even on first jobs and living with their parents, uh, that they're not as independent as they were at one time. Also, this last week, I read an article on revenge. And one, a, a girl got a, a bunch of shrimp, cut it up real small, and then put it in the bathroom in the shower curtain, took the shower curtain apart, and then stuffed it down inside, and then put it back together. And you know what I mean? That, that, that just stink forever. And the older it'd get, the worse it'd stink. And uh, then uh, another one had, had a deal where she took some milk and put it in a spray bottle and set it outside for a few days 
and she had a key left from her boyfriend's house, and she went over while he is at work and sprayed his carpet. Can you imagine how that would stink? And uh, I, I'd say that, that's pretty rough, gal. You better not cross her. Probably the worst one was a girl got some mince garlic, garlic chopped up in little pieces, and uh, he was gone. She went to his house and filled his shoes with men's garlic. There's no way you can get those shoes clean. Just ruin the shoes. And I guess the absolute worst is this gal found that her uh, boyfriend had been cheating with her best friend, her, her former best friend. And she did not let on that she knew anything. And she was a dance with him and asked to borrow his pickup to go get something. And she took it down and uh, put it on the railroad tracks left the keys in it and locked the door and went back and told him where it was. And he went down to get it. He got there just in time to see the train hit it. You know, and I think in that one, they file criminal charges against her. But uh, some people get a little carried away on things like that. And, and uh, you know, they need to move it. My, <clears throat> my mother always said, hate will destroy the vehicle that carries it. And I believe that. Because you get consumed with it. And the reason you pray for your enemies is so you won't be consumed with them and spend all your time trying to figure out how to get even with them or whatever. A guy asked me in Congress one time if I got even with everybody that crossed me in politics. If you've been in politics very long and you try to get even with everybody that, you know, was on the opposite side, yeah, there's not enough hours in the day. You need to just move on. They may be your best friend on the next bill that comes up. A couple of other things came up this week. Um, there was a guy in Illinois that stole a backhoe and drove it to the airport, which was 10 miles away, and caught a flight. Now, I don't know why, uh, you know, I mean, mental illness would be my defense if I was representing him. But uh, they caught him, and they had pictures of him and everything. And it, uh, they, they got suspicious when, you know, the airport called them and said they had a backhoe just parked, you know, where the cars usually park. And uh, just just got a backhoe and drove over there. It uh, wasn't his brightest move. There was an interesting fact came out. Someone asked how big Big Bird was. And, and I saw that, and I couldn't believe it. And I realized Big Bird was big. You know, Sesame Street is eight feet, two inches. That's great Big Bird, not just Big Bird, great Big Bird. And, and I, I don't know why they made him so large, but uh, they, they definitely did. On a more positive note, there was a guy in Port Charlotte, Florida, and he, had, uh, he was in a bar. And, and you would have guessed this as I finished the rest of the story. If I hadn't said he was in the bar, you'd have guessed it. He went outside to go to the bathroom. He didn't want to go in the restroom. And he went out, and there was a pond out back. And then he fell. And he woke up, and he was in the hospital, and an alligator had bitten off his right arm. And, and he said, well, it's not like it's the end of the world. You know, <laughs> it was pretty positive. I, I think maybe he's still drunk when he you know, decided that. Ford Motor Company uh, announced this week that they're uh, going to leave AM radio uh, in. And, and most most of AM radio uh, are talk shows that are pretty conservative. You know, you, you see a breakdown of the media, the newspapers, whether it's AP or LA Times, New York Times, or Washington Post are all pretty liberal. And then the TV, all of them are except Fox, and they're pretty conservative. And then uh, talk radio, most of those are, are conservative, most of them AM. One thing to remember on this radio situation, AM radio is where you get the emergency alert system, and that uh, whether it's tornado alerts or, or whatever, and so that is it's really needed. Um, also, you look at Budweiser, they're still – scrambling, trying to make sure that their uh, ads are uh, appealing to their base. Uh, their base of beer drinkers are a bunch of people that love the country and everything, and so they've, they've taken a real patriotic stand on their advertising now. 
I don't know if that'll help them soothe things over or not, but they did make adjustments. There was an unusual survey did, you know, if your spouse missed an anniversary, would you consider breaking up? And 68% said yes. Look, you know, I mean, you're going to miss some some dates, some birthdays and anniversaries. And I missed my dad's one time. I think I've told this before, but I missed his dad, my dad's birthday, and I called him the day afterwards and uh, was very apologetic. And he said, hey, I understand. You only had 364 days to get ready for it. If someone leaves you because you missed an anniversary, they were looking for a reason. I mean, they, they had a foot out the door already, so don't don't worry about that. Georgia uh, sent out a notice, and Governor Kemp uh, made the adjustment. Governor Kemp's a great governor, does a great job, and, and he's someone that's going to be on the national scene someday. And uh, he uh, – but the driver's license – that, you know, people complain about their drive. My driver's license picture is not good. I always complain about it. And so they let you send something in. And they sent out a notice to tell people it's classy and you got to be clothed. You know, uh, that, that uh, one time I was in Amarillo and it was uh, right after the opening day by about two days of pheasant hunting. And they just give you different little things, but they handed you one piece of paper that says, do not clean birds in car. <laughs> somebody, it, it always means somebody did it. They got out there and got to cleaning birds in the car. I mean, there's nothing worse than uh, trying to clean up where somebody's cleaned a bird in the car. My favorite, and I'm going to end on it, it's a positive story. In Kentucky, a guy was running out of gas, and he coasted. He, he ran out, coasted into a service station and filled up. While he was there, he bought a lottery ticket, and he hit and won a million dollars. Now, you're talking about lucky. That guy's lucky. You know, coasted into the service station and won a million bucks. It was his day. Remember, the patriotism is loving your country all the time, but uh, bragging or being supportive of the government is when they're right.